Now, the Chargers are making headlines during this offseason after a lawsuit filed in Los Angeles calling for the team to be sold. The sister of Dean Spanos, who's also a co-owner of the team, says in the petition, the mounting debt has destroyed the family's finances and the only option is to put the NFL team on the market. According to reports, Dean refuses to sell right now. The Spanos' parents purchased the Chargers in 1984 and is now divided among the four children. And joining us to talk more about what's happening with the Chargers is Sully from Kogo AM600. Sully, good morning. Your reaction to the news when you heard it? Well, I have to say the allegations leveled by uh, Dia Spanos were pretty sobering, to say the very least. Um, if you think in terms of uh, the debt that this franchise is creating is causing an estimated yearly loss of $11 million for their family trust, uh, if I put it into uh, very simple terms, this whole deal is financially upside down. Um, and look, um, there had been whispers of tax issues going back uh, all you know, well back to 2015. This all started well before 2021. And again, as you mentioned, this document, uh, which aims to force the sale of the team, paints a pretty bleak picture of the family finances and the internal conflicts. Uh, in fact, just getting to quick numbers here, uh, her petition says that the, that the trust has debts and expenses right now of $353 million as of September 30th. Nearly half of that is due uh, to the trust investment in the Chargers. And uh, that trust stake in the Chargers makes up 83% of its holdings. So bottom line is, this entire family's wealth is tied to whether the Chargers do well or not. And, and if you think in terms of you know, what happened back in 2017, uh, this turbulence in my mind, and, and I talked about it on talk radio, I talked about it here with you guys, it seemed more than inevitable when the Spanish has made a really risky and controversial decision in 2017 to leave San Diego for LA. Um, there was no groundswell of support to, to lure them north. Uh, and, and at the end of the day, uh, if you think in terms of, of the fact that they have this huge bill coming up of $650 million, a relocation fee that's supposed to be paid at a rate of $65 million a year, moving to LA came with a steep price in the first place. And what's more, the league has also a flip tax on the deal, meaning that if uh, Spanos were to move to, uh, to LA and then immediately sell his team and reap a reward, He'd have to pay another tax to the NFL for that. So uh, I believe, though, this timing is very interesting, Jason, because this filing probably could have happened over a year ago. There's been longstanding problems if you, leave, if you read the filing here. Uh, but that's when everybody's heading into the coronavirus a year ago. Right now, with the NFL fresh off the announcement of media deals worth nearly twice as much as the previous media deals, it makes the value of NFL franchises even higher. So I'm, I'm interested to see what the timing's like here, because uh, if the court uh, forces a sale, and the court, of course, certainly can force a sale, uh, if they think that, that, that the trust is in danger and that there's any impropriety here going on, or if the, if the trustee of the trust is not acting in good faith, they can certainly force a sale. Uh, if that happens, I wonder what the NFL is going to see. Uh, going to say about that. So it really is a mess. And it always has been a mess the second they left here. Well, that, you know, you mentioned the flip tax. And that's one thing. It, look, Dean Spanos, when it comes to the owners and the owners meetings, he's the black sheep in the room. They knew it was a mistake to let him go. It was too late. Yeah. They let him go to L.A. He is the black sheep. He wants to be as rich as all his other owner friends. And he's just not. So if they get behind this movement, uh, Sam Farmer, who covers the NFL for the L.A. Times, made the observation that if the if the owners get behind this, it'll be interesting if they decide to reduce or eliminate that flip tax penalty. Yeah, I saw that as well. But remember, there's the tale of two cities there with the owners, Jay, just as you mentioned. There's the Stan Kroenke's of the world and there's the Dean Spanos's of the world. And, 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 and the, you know, then there's Jerry Jones and, and, and Kroenke are all in that same club. And there really is that sort of thing that goes on in the NFL. But it's notable here also that the attorney representing uh, Dean's sister, uh, is Adam Streisand, and he's no lightweight because he represented Steve Ballmer in the in his purchase of the Clippers, and he and he defended Jeannie Buss in her successful fight to cement control of the Lakers. Now, none of that guarantees a change in ownership for the Chargers, but think about this: uh, the universe of people who could afford an NFL franchise is really small, but there's billionaires who could do so. Look at Ballmer. Uh, who has an ever-expanding footprint in Los Angeles, would like to own an NFL team, and so would Jeff Bezos. So I think this, all of this is really interesting, and she, uh, being Dia Spanos, might be the smartest person in the room here with respect to the timing. Yeah, and old-school Charger fans like myself, at, at first blush, you look at this news yesterday no. and go, you're, you're, the first thing your mind goes to is the Chargers back in San Diego. 
Well, that's exactly right. You know, I, listen, I remember watching John Hale and Lance Allworth when my dad took me to the San Diego Stadium in 1970. And I remember thinking to myself, this is the coolest thing that ever happened. I know there's kids that will never get a chance to see that the way I did and you did, Jay. But here, here's the deal. If there is a sale, you got to think they're going to get the heck out of, out of Los Angeles because there's 24 sports to watch in, in, in Los Angeles. The Chargers are the 25th. That's the problem up there. So uh, fingers crossed. I'll, I'll be staying all over this thing. For Man, you. If, if we can come together and do something like Seattle did. You go to Seattle, yeah. you drive up the five, you look over, you've got a beautiful baseball stadium sitting next to a beautiful football stadium. And just thinking, and I would like to get your take on this, maybe not now, but in the future, we talk about not losing Comic-Con, the need for expansion. Right. What if we were to incorporate Petco Park, a new football stadium, and the convention center, and Comic-Con and other conventions just blow up? I've got an hour show for you, Jay. Uh, <laughs> I, I want you to, in the meantime, research what happened in Detroit. Maybe the best uh, outcome for what you're talking about right there. You've got a street corner on four corners that have four professional sports teams and a convention center. It's All right. fantastic. All right, All right Sully. Hey, have, you a, too, man. have a great one, man.